Hello and welcome back to another video in what feels like it has been forever and there's been a reason for that. So I have been working on this that you now see. This is my office based in Clerkenwell here in central London. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate to be here so I've been working on this building this up so I can come back to YouTube. Now this is a very spontaneous video straight off the top um, so do forgive me. Uh, all the background noise, everything like that, I will eventually get a microphone and I will upgrade the quality and everything will become a lot better. But I just thought, if I don't start, I'm never going to start. So here we are. Now as you can see, we've got some watches on the table right here that we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to do, I'm going to aim to do one of these videos every single week. Now for those of you who've been following me for some time over at kibblewatches.co.uk, every Saturday new watches go live on the website. And that is what we're going to be looking at this Saturday's drop. Now the aim is to have this live on Friday evening. So you get a sneak peek of what's going to be there the very next morning. So make sure you head over to kibblewatches.co.uk first thing Saturday morning. Take a look at these beauties, even if it is just for the photography and the descriptions, because we put a lot of work into our watches. So keep an eye out. Over at Kibble Watches, we don't discriminate. We do all the watches you can probably imagine from literally £300 entry level vintage to £500, £600 entry level modern to really amazing condition, pretty much unworn modern pieces to crazy vintage pieces, some that you would have probably never have seen and likely will never see again. So that is exactly what this job demonstrates. That's why I wanted to make sure we did this video. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so before we dive into these incredible pieces and take a look, there is one piece missing, a very beautiful gold garrod, which we'll talk about still, and I'll show some photos. But the reason it's not here is just receiving some final tinkering just before it's ready for the website, some final regulation. But let's start with what's on my wrist. So today I am wearing this absolutely gorgeous Nevada in stunning, stunning condition. Really, really nice, all original. I've had the case redone and it just looks amazing. Let's take it off and have a closer look. Perfect. So here it is. Really, really nice condition because we've had it redone very, very well. You can see the chamfering on those lugs and those lugs are the highlight here. This whole case construction is incredible. You know, just a really, really gorgeous piece. Very underrated. It will be going live in potentially one or two weeks, um, but I'm going to enjoy it in the meantime. That's the good thing about doing what I love. I get to enjoy these pieces before they go live. So let's jump in to the Amiga Seamaster over here. So here is the Amiga Seamaster. Now this is the now discontinued model. So you can see it comes with its box. It comes with all of its paperwork and receipt as well. And these Amiga boxes are pretty hefty. I mean, anyone who's had a Speedmaster knows Amiga go above and beyond with their boxes. Uh, not everyone seems to agree with that. And that is up to debate, but I don't really mind too much. Storing them is a bit of a pain though, but here we go. So here is the watch. Now, as I said, this is now discontinued. So Amiga replaced this model with a wave dial ceramic and they increased the size a little bit and added an exhibition case back. So this is pre all of that. And in my opinion, I kind of prefer the non wave dial. Let me know down below what you prefer. Do you prefer the non wave dial or the wave dial? And this is in incredible condition. It's from 2019. So it's one of the final, it'll be one of the final ones that they ever made really, because as I said, discontinued comes in great condition. I don't think you will find a better condition one unless it is brand new. And this is pretty close to brand new. Now, as I said, 41 millimeter case with a lug to lug of 47. So it wears super compact on the wrist. We'll put it on the wrist in a second to show you. Inside being away in here is the Amiga Coaxial 2500. A very, very reliable caliber uh, with a pretty good spec sheet, which you can totally check out. As I said, comes with box and papers and it is priced super super fair so definitely keep an eye out for that and let's show it on wrist here it is on my six and a three quarter inch wrist as you can see it's got all of its links and it's not sized at the moment but there it is i've always liked these i think they're very very nice personally the bracelets don't quite do it for me that's about the only thing and the helium escape valve there is again a point of contention for some but in terms of value especially when we take a look at obviously what the submariner which i know comparing it to the Submariner, but it is a comparable to that. And, and especially like the Tudor Black Bays and things like that. I think the Seamaster offers a ton of value, absolute ton. Plus condition wise, as I said, unless you're finding a brand new one, you're not gonna find better. Next up is this really, really gorgeous everyday wear Oris. Let's have a look. 
Now for the Oris. It comes with its box. It doesn't come with any papers, but it does make it a very, very good deal indeed. So here it is. This is the Oris Classic Date. Now they still do this model. This model is from about circa 2014. Um, and it is in great condition. There's a few signs of wear, you know, a couple of scratches here and there, but overall very, very good. And this is the 42 mil model, but let's show it straight away on wrist. And as you can see, 42 mil wears incredibly well. Um, and I'm someone who prefers smaller watches, but as you can see, that's on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. And I don't think you can go wrong because it's mostly dial and maybe the case because of the flanking and the, the slope lugs, it just hugs the wrist and this bracelet is super comfortable as well. I think it's just a really, really good looking watch. You have an exhibition case back right there, which is showcasing the uh, Oris Caliber 733, which is essentially a Salita SW200. Very reliable watch and movement. You can't really go wrong. And the dial here is gorgeous. Now, it, first glance, it actually just looks pretty plain, but it isn't. You take a closer look, you've got some guilloche around near the numerals. The numerals are very highly polished as are the indices. It's just an attractive piece. Great for everyday wear because you can dress it up, you can dress it down on a black strap. It looks amazing. So a really good option for someone either just getting into watches or someone who just wants a really good watch they can wear regularly. Now let's go big boy vintage with the Lamania HS9. Now let's move on to something seriously cool from 1945. This is a Lamania HS9. Now the HS stood for Hydrographic Survey and the 9 was an indication for the wristwatch. So this is actually a proper military piece. You can see it has military markings there with the broad arrow, which indicates British military. And this was for the Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm. So you've got a lot of history and a lot of really cool charm and character here. But the highlight for this piece, again, you'll have to excuse all the noise outside. I will um, fix all this at some point. But the condition of this is ridiculously good and all original. And you might be looking at this going, I thought chronographs usually have two pushers. Well, this is called a mono pusher. So everything all works through the single pusher, the start, the stop, and the resets all through that one. As you can see, it doesn't say Lamania on the dial, so there are different variants of this HS9. The movement inside is Lamania. This was made by Lamania, but it was supplied with these, as they call, sterile dials. Now, the dial is original. You can see it's got that beautiful patina. And patina is a, is a whole other question and conversation in, a, in and of itself, but this is nice and even. Really beautiful blued hands. Nice loom around there as well. Again, just a really, really attractive piece and a lot of history. For pieces like this, definitely head over to the website to give it a read because we've done a, a little history write-up all about this watch. So check it out. And I nearly forgot, here is a wrist shot on my six and a three quarter inch wrist on this really nice green, khaki green NATO, which really adds to the military vibe, but a really, really gorgeous piece. 38 millimeter case size, so quite large, but it wears very, very well. Keeping it on crazy stealth hidden gems, let's move on to this Tissot Anti-Magnetic. Next is a watch at first glance you'd be mistaken for thinking this is a new watch because the condition is ridiculous like the dial everything all original and absolutely perfect so this is what I would call near new old stock the reason being there are a couple of marks where obviously the case has been opened over the years but nothing major at all and it's as close to near, old, near, near new old stock as you are going to get now this is a 1941 Tissot anti-magnetic the caliber inside here is a Tissot Cal 27. Really nice, manually wound right here. You can hear that clicking away. You can tell those gears are all pretty much fresh. Really, really nice piece. And you can see it comes on this lovely vintage pigskin uh, strap. It definitely seems like pigskin anyway. There, there wasn't really any indication, but that is what it feels like. A nice old buckle as well. And you can see it comes with a swing tag, Tissot swing tag with serial numbers and stuff which all match up. So very, very cool. And the dial is to die for. So this is oversized at 37 millimeters. So I'll rest this on my on my wrist so you can see it right there. It is a big watch for 1941. You gotta think this is during the height of World War, uh, World War II. And they're making a watch this big with that much dial and that much space between the indices and everything like that. It is truly stunning and those hands are incredible i mean that whole dial this whole watch is incredible now the price of this one will come as a shock to some people who have absolutely sort of no idea why a tso could be that much but when you see this watch in the flesh you will understand why it's what we call find another it's that kind of watch where you're not going to find another in this condition so 
you know, it is what it is. But really, really cool piece. Definitely check out the photos on the website. Before we jump onto the other Tiso, let's go over here and have a look at this beautiful Amiga. Now for a 1944 Amiga. Now, if you know your vintage Amigas, you will be forgiven for thinking this is an Amiga Suvran because it kind of looks like one, but it isn't. This is a reference 2384-5. It's essentially the same thing, uh, apart from it's not officially that, if that makes sense. But the dial on this is incredible. Lovely original dial, original loom, which is all aged beautifully. And it's all the same color. Nice speckling to the dial, which is always good to see. You know, some people don't like that, but that is good to see. Vibrant blue, heat treated blue, second hand. And the case has been refinished, but professionally refinished. I mean, some people would definitely look at this and think it's the original finish, and they'd be forgiven for thinking so, but really, really nice. Nice screw down back. Inside here is the infamous 30T2, uh, which a lot of these watches used at this era. And it's just a very, very attractive piece. Comes in at 35 millimeters, so it wears really, really well. You can see it here on my six and three quarter inch wrist. And it's paired on this beautiful strap as well. I mean, talk about strap pairing. That is perfect. Really, really nice. Again, condition is everything on this piece. And that is a perfect piece. Now let's jump to the oversized Tissot Anti-Magnetic. Now, if you thought that other Tissot was big for 1941, this is even more impressive at 38 millimeters and 1939. Now, another Tissot Anti-Magnetic, really, really gorgeous. As I said, 1939, so it's two years earlier, but still using the same caliber 27 inside. A nice manually wound movement. Again, that feels really, really nice. And this is in all original condition. It's quite interesting because these cases, um, the bezel and the case backs overlap ever so slightly. And this was quite common on some Amigas at the same era uh, in the sort of late 30s, early 40s. But just a really cool piece, really nice condition. Nice original dial as well, which has seen some age and some wear, but I, I really like it. And as you can see, the crystal has developed some hazing around the sides. Quite normal for a watch of this age, but that can be replaced at request, but I've left it all original. Again, a really nice strap pairing, which just makes it really, really work. And as I said, 38 millimeters. So it fills up my wrist nicely. It's a really, really nice size watch. You know, you could very easily wear this if you have absolutely no idea about vintage because oftentimes vintage watches are a lot smaller and this gives you the best of both worlds you get a beautiful vintage watch and you get modern proportions that are very easy to wear in any situation now personally i, I can wear 32 and 33 mil but i know not everyone can so this offers the best of both and before we finish off with this gorgeous massively underrated long jeans so let's talk quickly about the watch that is missing from here so the watch that's receiving some final tinkering is a gorgeous garrod in nine karat gold and it's actually their Denison Aquatite case. So it's a bit of a heavier construction case. You will find a lot of these gold garrods out and about, but this one is the heavier style, which means it's, it's quite a bit nicer, really. Now, this is an interesting piece for many reasons. One, it's made in England, which is really, really cool. It's one of the final brands that was sort of made in England. It was registered to Her Majesty the Queen um, as well, which is super, super cool. And inside is actually a Smith's movement, which is jeweled at 18 jewels as opposed to the 15 jewels which Smith's themselves used. So they added three jewels for, for Garrod and a couple of other brands that they outsourced this movement to. Now this watch is from 1961, but this is where this watch gets interesting, for me anyway, because we flip it over and you can see there's an engraving on the back. Now usually I try to stay clear of engravings because it's something quite personable, uh, personal, sorry, and it might not be for everyone, but this one is really really cool because it's for 30 years service at Ford the car company now this watch does come in at 33.5 millimeters but it's got a look to look length of about 41 millimeters so it wears really really well especially for 1961 and it does come with its original box as well so be sure to check this one out okay so now that's the mystery watch that isn't here let's move on to the final piece this beautiful longines and finally this stunning long jeans is actually one of my favorites from the drop and it's probably one of the most affordable in the drop as well it's a really really nice very early 1961 long jeans automatic now at first glance you'd be forgiven for thinking it's 1970s as i first thought but having run the serials and checked and everything it's 1961 really really nice case very good original condition you can see super sharp and the way that those looks chamfer down and they're very, very straight, but the way they cut down right at the end is gorgeous. Original dial as well, as you can see. Longines automatic there, subsidiary seconds. 
nice Longines sign crown and a nice screw back and the calibre inside here is an automatic Cal 350 which is almost like a rail work system, it's very very cool and we have it paired on this beautiful sort of dark blue strap and I've put it on with a Longines buckle as well so overall just a very very gorgeous piece, it comes in at 30 five millimeters correction sorry 34 millimeters but it wears incredibly well because of that 42 mil lug to lug length and as you can see the lugs are super straight so it fills up the wrist really really nicely i think this is a very very underrated vintage watch and i do not think this will stick around and the reason being i'll end up taking it for myself because <laughs> it is gorgeous so there you have it that is this week's drop so make sure you head over to kibblewatches.co.uk to check them out in all their details photography everything like that regardless of whether you're interested in purchasing there's a lot of history in there to read up on so thank you all very much for watching let me know down in the comments how you would like these episodes to be done if you've got any ideas any feedback i'm completely all ears because as i said this is incredibly off the cuff and a little bit random really so uh, <laughs> i hope you all appreciate it and i will see you all again next time. Take care.